Right, another day, another trip to Facebook. Let's see here. <laughs> what? Okay, so, so that happened. Wow! Anyway, hey there guys, and welcome to what will probably be the last Usagi video for a while. I, I realize you must be getting a little tired of hearing me only talk about Rabbit Samurai right now, but after two videos, did you honestly expect me to let this arc pass without saying a couple words about it? Yeah, hell no. So to those that still don't know, uh, Miyamoto Usagi, the main character from the comic book series Usagi Yojimbo, has recently guest starred in the current Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon in a three episode arc. For those that haven't seen the episodes, the basic premise is that there is a young boy named Kintaro who is apparently some kind of chosen one that will attain great power and needs to be escorted to a temple so he can be safe. Naturally, it falls on Usaki to do this, but the demonic Jay wants the boy for his own purposes. And in order to capture him, he summons the turtles from their own reality and takes over their minds in order to get them to kill Usagi. Once they break free of his mind control, however, they join Usagi and Kintaro on their quest, hoping that going to the temple will help them find a way home. And those are the basics. First of all, let's talk about this version of Usagi. I've done a video where I talked about his earlier appearances in other Turtles animated media and... Wow, they really uh, made sure that you don't doubt for a second he's badass here. From the deep voice to the much, much, much stockier build than he was ever drawn with before, to the sheer badassery of his fights, like... There is no doubt that this is the most formidable Usagi we've seen so far, definitely when it comes to fighting. This guy just dives straight into the fray and makes the turtles look like a bunch of chumps. It's, it's really impressive. As awesome as he is though, there are some things I would have liked to see. I mean, I really like his design and how fast he is in combat, like how tall he is, how much stockier he is, how much older and more grizzled he appears. It all works great and I like little details like making sure that his scar actually looks like a scar. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that's an eyebrow when they read the comic the first time, I, I know I did. Look, don't get me wrong when I say this, because it makes sense for this arc to be very action-oriented and very fast-moving, since, uh, since it is a very action-oriented situation. It's an escort mission with a lot of dangers on the way, and it is on an action show on Nickelodeon that is more geared towards children than the comics are, even if the show does occasionally get very, very dark. But if only there had been one more episode so we could have seen some of the quieter sides of Usagi. He's more than just a badass samurai, he's also the guy who will stop and compliment a merchant on his stock when he buys a radish, or who will tell opponents to back off before he fights them, or who will laugh a little at something funny he comes across. Um, it's not completely absent, there are some moments where he like chats to Kintaro and imparts some wisdom, or he sits at the fireplace with the turtles and they just have a little chat. So, so it's not all gone, it's there, and I still really like this take on the character. I just also really want to see the other side of him. The 2003 cartoon was pretty good about that, giving him a couple moments to just, like, chat with Leonardo. Here they barely really get time to befriend each other outside of, you know, trying not to die together. <laughs> and then there's Kintaro himself, the annoying golden boy that they have to, uh, to escort. And of course he's a spoiled brat because he's been pampered all his life, been told he's destined for greatness, all that. And naturally his arc will be to learn to be a little more humble about his position. Um, the thing about such a character is it's very hard to make them endearingly annoying, and while Kintaro never, to me at least, becomes so annoying I can't stand him, he definitely freaking toes the line. I appreciate that they gave him an actual child voice, it's, it's way too rare in cartoons for that to happen, so that works for him, um, but there's just... Something about the voice just doesn't really fit with the image I get when I see him, or with the properly spoiled attitude he has like no no slide on the voice actor he, he definitely voices well and acts well enough but i'm just a little iffy on kintaro in general um he's not offensively bad but i I'm, uh, i don't know something about it doesn't quite sit right and of course we have to talk about jay we definitely have to talk about jay um i really appreciate that they brought him in as a villain really make this usagi story this time the other times he showed up he's been a he's very much been a guest character in this case it's more like the turtles are the guest characters like this is an usagi arc and they brought in jay and he's every bit as pan shittingly terrifying as he's supposed to be he he looks very comic book accurate first of all but 
I'm surprised at how much more of a sorcerer he is this time around. Um, his strength and his nature is very ambiguous in the comics. Here, he def they definitely embrace the, the demon aspect of the character. Like he, he kind of takes the role of a character called Kakira from one of the old comic book crossovers. Um, at least in the first episode, which I thought was a really nice touch. There are actually a lot of nods to the comic that I really appreciate, and even a flashback in the Stan Sakai art style that I really, really like. But um, it, it just blew me away. Like, I, I've never seen Jay be this much of an all-out magician, and I wonder if that's because this is an, um, an alternate universe version of him that's a little more forward with his stuff. In any case, he's super, super fun to watch, and... and really really frightening like he should be and I I just appreciate that they brought him in to really make this Usagi story and for the record that first scene in the first episode of him and Usagi fighting wonderful recreation of his first appearance in the comics that was that was awesome I loved it and also can we talk really quickly about this bear guy because he's awesome and I actually kind of want to see him again holy crap and then there are the turtles themselves, and maybe I'm biased because I really like the comic, but I do also really like the turtles, but I really appreciate that they're much more the guest characters, like I mentioned uh, in Usagi's story, than Usagi is the guest character in theirs for once. Both because it's different from the other times he's appeared where Usagi has come to New York or met them somewhere else, except for that one 2003 series episode that I, I really like. Um... They're not inconsequential to the plot, they react to Usagi, they talk to Kentaro, they react to the things around them, they all get their moments of heroism. But there's just something fun about seeing them being plucked, not getting to see them before they are summoned, whatever the hell they were doing, because it's not relevant. It makes Usagi's world feel more wondrous than if you see them being taken from it first, because wow, all of a sudden we're here now, oh here are the turtles, now we have something to hold on to. Um, speaking from someone who might not know who Usagi is. Now we have someone to hold on to, and now we can experience this world from their eyes. Uh, just fun all around. I also really appreciate that this is like the one time Usagi has faced Tanuki, and yep, yep, those are balls. No doubt about it. We're, we're going Pompoko up in here. So I've pretty much just been rambling um, about all the things I like. I really like this arc. Uh, the people behind the Nickelodeon show really stepped up their game here. I still wish I could get to see a solo Usagi animated thing. Like, if I had the, the pull or the resources for it and I had an animation studio or the like, I would move mountains to make a series or at least an anthology movie happen. And there's plenty of material. I don't see why not, uh, other than, of course, the everlasting ratings issue. But my point is, I, I just really appreciate all the attention to detail here. Usagi is on point. Um... More gruff, more stoic than usual, but that makes sense for the situation he's in, so I don't mind. Um, his world is very well presented. They don't feel the need to go out of the way with exposition to explain every single aspect of his world or of the uh, feudal Japanese aspects of it, and that's really refreshing. And man, it was just fun. As a fan, this was a freaking treat. And I really, really... I know the series is ending. We, this Turtle series is ending now and we'll get a new one. But I really, really hope that someone will look at this and see the potential of Usagi as a solo animated feature. I I want that to happen. Plus, there is, like, no murder I wouldn't commit to to see Kitsune animated. But that's just me. I'm not creepy, I swear. So yeah, those are my quick thoughts on the Usagi Ojimbo arc of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. And I really liked it, and I hope you guys did too, because uh, Lord knows this character needs more recognition than he gets. Um, so let me know in the comments what you thought of this arc, what you think might happen with the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, cartoon that is coming up. And actually, let's get some conversation going. If an animated movie series with Usagi was to be made, is there anyone you would like to see make it? Or is there a particular story you would especially like to see adapted? Let's get some Usagi conversation going. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. In any case, for more videos on all sorts of comic book, movie, cartoon, geekery, subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. Please watch my other videos if you'd like. And consider following on my various social media. There are links to the whole thing in the description below. So uh, thanks, and I will see you soon for some more nerdery, because that's all I know how to do. Bye.